Hi, and welcome to the Bookish Stitcher podcast. My name is Jeanette. I'm your host. You can find me on most places as um, Bookish Stitcher, all one word, like Ravelry, Instagram, and Goodreads. I hope you guys have had a lovely week since we last were here chatting in my kitchen and my table. But um, we had a really good one. We were very, very busy, or I was very busy. Uh, let's see, this week and uh, weekend was Valentine's. My daughter ha has a play group that she's in, and there are a whole bunch of kids, and I think I've said before that I'm an assistant organizer for that. So we had a Valentine's Day party this week, and most of the knitting that you'll actually see this week, I finished the Sunday night after I recorded last week, and Monday and Tuesday. Wednesday was all prep mostly for the Valentine's Day party. I think I started a new project Wednesday morning, but did like that tiny much on it, not much, and worked all Wednesday on the Valentine's Day party. And then Thursday morning, woke up, finished getting everything ready, and off we went to a Valentine's Day party. And that was all day. So um, as I've said before on the podcast, I'm kind of an introvert in large groups and stuff like that. And it was a very, very large group for the Valentine's Day party. Probably, I don't know, I couldn't guess. I'm not good at like looking at numbers of people and guessing. But I definitely over 50. 50 to 75 people, let's just say that. Because I believe there are about 50 to 75 members plus their kids in the playgroup. So it was a very large group and there was a lot to get prepared for it because it was a potluck event so you had to bring food. And there was also a bake sale to help, help raise money for the podcast. Podcast for the playgroup. <laughs> My brain is... Okay, yeah. Some coffee. I got a new mug this week. It's really pretty. I love it. It's gorgeous. And so Thursday, after the Valentine's Day party, I didn't really knit much. I just needed to kind of have some alone time to myself. I didn't knit. I didn't read. My kids played with their Valentines, and I just kind of talk to them about the party and things like that. I didn't do much on that day. And then Friday, we also went out with friends in the afternoon. So I didn't get a lot done that day. And Saturday, I got an okay bit done. So let me go ahead and show you guys what I've worked on. I did finish a couple things. So last week, I was almost done with these. And I finished them, I believe, Monday or Tuesday. And these are my Breaking Heart Socks by Christy H. Payne. And they're just so pretty. I love how the variegated yarn plays with the Breaking Hearts pattern. And the yarn that this is done in is Neely's Knits in the Mood for a Love Affair. And I just had a little bit on that that I had to finish off this week, so it was nothing, no grand feat or anything like that. The next thing, I, okay, so this is really exciting. I finished the hand spun shawl. This is by Susan B. Anderson. It's called the Way It Shawl, the Yowza Way It Shawl. I did it out of hand spun, of course. But look, I this is my favorite thing ever. There are things, I guess, during our knitting career that just inspire love in us and just make us remember exactly why we love this craft. And this is one of those for me. And I would be wearing it right now. I'm still trying to figure out how exactly to wear it. It kind of it turns down the thing. So I'm not exactly sure how to wear it, but I'm experimenting with different ways. And it's two braids of Cloud Lover that were spun and then plied, spun separately and then plied together. And it's browns and purples with bits of white and bits of pink. And I just love it. I love it so much. I can't even tell you. My last finished object is something very tiny. Some things came in the mail on Saturday or Friday, and one of them was some yarn scraps from the lovely Melinda, who is known everywhere on Ravelry as Yarnder Woman. She's amazing. And she sent me some scraps for a blanket. Now, I know I showed you guys back in November I'd started a sock yarn blanket. Well, I hadn't worked on it since then. I really didn't like it, and I kept trying to think about why. And I finally came up with, I was doing it um, 31 stitches, and it was just too small for me, and I kept seeing other people's blankets 
when I would be at knit night or at a retreat and they were with larger squares and I just liked those better. It feels less fiddly to me when it's on larger. So I started another one using some yarn that she sent and this is um, in the Van Gogh opal in the cafe one and I did it on 51 squares and I like this a lot better and it was really neat because she instead of doing little mini skeins had wrapped the yarn around a card so as I was knitting I kept it on the card as I was knitting I could see bits of the card appear and it was like dangerous animal and different little tidbits on these animal on these animals that were on the card so it made me want to knit more and more to see what the card was underneath and I just it was really fun so thank you Melinda for this and I have a couple more scraps from her that I'm gonna add so I now I'm really liking the sock yarn blanket again now that it's bigger squares. It just kind of had to find what was right for me. I know there's different sizes that are right for everybody. So that's all my finished objects that I had for this week. Since I had finished off those socks, I couldn't not have socks on the needles, or I can, but I really like to have socks on the needles. So I believe Wednesday morning I started some socks and I was, it's a variegated, I thought it was a very, it is a variegated yarn, but I was looking for a pattern, I was looking online, and I almost went and bought this one that was new to me, and I said, no, go and look through, you have several sock yarn book or sock pattern books, go and find one from there. In my effort to knit from my huge, wonderful stat library of patterns. And so I found in this book, 25 Timeless Designs from Interweave, and the one I am knitting is called the Retro Rib. I believe it's somewhere in here. There we go. And I thought that that would look great with variegated as well because it's just a simple rib pattern. This shows you how much I have not knit. <laughs> this is all I got done. Started on Wednesday, been knitting with my coffee every morning. And that's all I got done. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I haven't been knitting very much, but it is striping, which I did not expect because it's not a self-striping. It's kind of doing a spiral stripe, but you can see the rib forming right in there. And this yarn is some BFL Yarn Pirate. And I'm really, really enjoying, this is my first time to ever knit socks with BFL, and I'm really enjoying that. The next thing I worked on just for a tiny bit this week, as I told you guys, I am doing a hat that I'm just working on when I watch Downton Abbey. And this hat is the Escargot hat by Veronica, Veronica Parsons. And didn't do much this week, because it was just an hour. The show's an hour, so I just, every week, I do an hour on it. I had the flower done. This wraps, it's a free pattern on Knitty. This wraps around and forms a flower. And then I've joined for working in the round. So all I have to do is just knit for a little while and do the decreases. So that will probably be done in one or two more shows. What got the most love this week was my sweater. And this sweater, this is my, in my um, awesome bag by Awesome Granny, my giant, it's perfect for sweater bag. So if you guys will remember, last time I was working on this sweater, which is the Ease Sweater by Alicia Plummer, and I'm doing it out of, I'm clinking, Malabrigo Rios. There you go, Malabrigo Rios, and that's the color. And this is what it looks like in the skein. It's very pretty purples and grays. Last time I showed this to you guys, I had just about, I had separated for the sleeves and done, I believe, two or three inches. I have now done almost 15 inches, so I knit 11 inches this week. And that sounds like a lot, but these are on size 10 and a half needles. So this is basically what I worked on at night after I'd had some just chilling, relaxing, and staring at the wall, kind of coming down from all the social interaction. But I love it. It's very, very long. I still have to pick up and do the um, turtleneck, but it's so long. And I'm at the point now where I'm going to be doing the bottom band. 
and I love how long this pattern is. Oftentimes I find with sweaters, I don't know if anybody else has this, that it's too short. I like my sweaters to be really, really long. I know that's supposedly not as flattering on my, you know, according to the knit what flatters your body and different stuff like that. I look better with a shorter one, but I like them long and, you know, knit what you love. And so I'm really glad that this pattern goes down a long way. It has a ribbing, so it will be ribbing right around there, but I'm just really happy to have a sweater that I think I will completely love. And it's going so fast on those size 10 and a half needles, so maybe next week I will have a finished sweater to show you guys. Actually, probably, because next week, I next weekend, I guess I can go ahead and say this now, Next weekend, I'm going to be at the retreat that is here. It's a local retreat, so you don't have to fly. I'm just driving with some friends from the retreat. There's not a market, so you don't have to, I don't have to worry about bringing money to spin on yarn. There's not any classes. I don't have to pay for any of that. It's the cheapest retreat, and it's, it's so inexpensive. And it's really amazing because the person who puts it on, Peg, she's in our Ravelry group. She's I think, saw a lodge that she would just like to go and hang out at. And so she contacted them and contacted a whole bunch of the local knitters and said, hey, we like to go spend a weekend. And it's amazingly cheap. It's the cheapest retreat I've ever been to. You wouldn't believe how cheap. But, because it's just two nights. It's two nights. And I am already planning my knitting that I'm going to take to that. I probably will take the sweater. I am definitely taking the color affection. So next week when I have the show, I'll probably do a recap of the retreat and there won't be much works in progress so probably most just be mostly finished objects because I will have countless hours to knit all day so that will be wonderful and the color affection will get done uh, I'm making myself a promise on that now that's all my works in progress I wanted to show you guys my spinning this I had finished up a little while ago and I talked about it on the podcast that I was learning a new technique. Normally when I spin on my ladybug wheel, Masha, I hold the fiber back here and I just pinch and pull from it into the wheel, but I wanted to try a new technique of spinning over the fold. And I had a bat that I had started spinning over Christmas, but I hadn't done most of it. I still had a large portion of it left. So what I did was I broke off a bit of the bat, I hold the fiber over my finger, and then you catch it from the tip and it creates like a little cyclone of the fiber going to the wheel. And that took me a while to figure out how to get it going. And if you would think under here, there's some really, really thick and thin parts. But if you'll notice, it got a little bit better. It's still not perfect because it's a brand new technique. But this is a bat that was from Christmas. So that's why it's kind of red and greens and whites. And this that I'm uh, spinning on is an Acre Works bobbin. I love these. They're a really good price and they have all kinds of fun designs. I have a couple of them. So that's my spinning from this week. I have a couple enabling things. Like I said last week, there is a D-stash thread on the Ravelry group, which is Bookish Stitcher, all one word, podcast. And one of the things that was listed in the D-Stash thread was from Phoenix um, Fire. And she had some of her lovely hand spun, so I bought some. And this is Don't Touch the Butt, which is a Finding Nemo reference. Look at those colors. Look at that spinning. She's amazing. So pretty. I love it. And these are my son's favorite colors, so I'm excited to knit him maybe a hat, maybe some fingerless mittens, depending on how much yardage I have. So that was one of them. The other thing that came was a complete surprise. I have, I listen to my audio podcasts while I'm at the gym, and I just, you know, kind of listen from the oldest one that I haven't listened to to the newest. And I found out from the U University podcast, just an audio done by Halsey Yarn, who's in our group and who's wonderful, that I had won a prize, and I didn't even realize that there were prizes going on for this. She's having a year of the sheep, which is every month, since it's on the Chinese calendar, it's the year of the sheep for that. Every month, 
there's a new sheep breed that we're getting to experiment with. And the socks that I showed earlier in the BFL, they're actually, that's the February sheep of the month. So I had entered my January one, which was the hat, the measure and love in the 100% merino, which was the sheep breed for January. I did not realize at all that there were yarn prizes. I guess she had some wonderful donations or people decided they wanted to, so she decided to give them away for that. And I had no idea when I entered that there was a possibility of winning. So I was really, really excited to find this in my mailbox and to find that I'd won it. This is some gorgeous yarn by PhD Yarns. And this is their DK, which is called Prelims. It's 100% superwash merino, 250 yards in the lab notebook colorway. So that's right there. If you guys can hear loud crashes upstairs, I'm sorry. But, you know, lots of us have pets, so we understand. <laughs> There's that. And I did go to their Etsy store, and I looked, and they have some gorgeous stuff. And I have, what I like to do, I almost use my Etsy cart as a wish list, and I will put things in there that I would eventually like to get. And if I can, you know, work some extra work from home or stuff like that and have some extra money from that, then I will go ahead and get some stuff in my cart. But I'm really excited. So you should definitely go check them out. And... That is all of my enabling. Before I get into the book this week, I wanted to talk about some people have been mentioning to me in private messages or on Instagram that they would like to do a read-along. I'll take a sip of my coffee. So I thought that would be really fun. I was actually talking to Wiley K on Instagram. She's like, no Russian epics, please. <laughs> and I, I was teasing that Oh, I really want to read Brothers Karamazov, though, by Dostoevsky. But I completely understand that Russian epics are not most people's cup of tea. I, like I said last week about the palate cleanser, I, palate cleanser books, I really, there's not, there aren't books that I would consider challenging. I just, I love every different kind, so I love the Russian epics. They may take me longer to read, of course, but I still, I just love them. But I know that's not everybody's cup of tea. So what I was thinking is around the middle of March, maybe perhaps March 15th, we could start a read-along in the group since it's the bookish stitcher. It's applicable to have a read-along. I was going to have a list compiled already this week of different books that we could perhaps read, but I didn't quite get to the full list. I have two or three in my mind and then I need to kind of narrow down another 10 I have to just a manageable like five. So if you're watching this and you would like to participate in the upcoming read-along, you can go to the Ravelry group on, and there will be a poll under this episode, episode 30. I can't believe that, episode 30. The podcast is about to pass me in age very soon. Um, so that's crazy that we've been podcasting for so long. But you will see a poll under this episode's title, and it will have five different options. I thought that would be a good number of books that you can pick from for the read-along. And I will make sure that they all fit in with the 2015 challenge somehow, because I know there are a couple of us doing that. I'm still doing that. And so that if you are participating in the 2015 read-along read challenge, then you can fit the read-along into that. So I look forward to reading a book with you guys and having a good online book discussion. I'm really excited about a couple of the options that I've thought up for that, so I think it'll be really fun. And if it starts March 15th, that'll give you plenty of time to get the book. So the book this week. This is one of my favorite books of all time which is a really big thing to say. But I think it's talked about a lot about when you read a book and it transports you to another world. And that doesn't often happen to me, but it did with this book so much so that when I stopped reading, I felt like I had left the world of the book and just entered the real world. And I was a little bit sad. So you're probably really curious what this book is. And it's a popular book. It actually surprised me because I often don't like popular books. 
but I did like this one. I, I loved this one. I need to go back and reread it. And it is The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. And it is a fantastic, fantastic book. It's, of course, a fantasy. And the whole idea of the book is that there are these two magicians, and they place a wager that they can make the best future magi magician. And so the one man picks his daughter, the other man picks an orphan boy, and they each raise them completely separate, and they each teach them magic in completely separate ways, and they kind of groom them from a very young age to try to see how they'll act as magicians when they're older. And the whole stage for this entire competition that they, I don't even believe they really know it's a competition at first. The whole stage for this is the night circus. And the night circus, oh, I want to go to the night, I want to live at the night circus. I will take my family with me and we will live at the night circus. So the night circus, as it sounds, only appears at night. And it's from sundown to sun up, like just before the sun is there. And there are several different tents. There's one that is a maze of clouds, and you can just walk around in the clouds in this maze. There's one that is a garden made of ice. And there's just so many, and it's all magically done by these two magicians that are training, and they each have like their own specialities, and they're performing in different tents. And of course, there are other people that are also at the circus, and kids that are born at the circus, and different things like that. It's just so wonderful, and the book does do flashbacks to different times. And I won't give away too much what happens between the two magi magicians, um, but it's just wonderful, and there's, of course, a big problem that they have to figure out at the end. And I just can't recommend this book enough. It, like I said, left me in another world that I was sorry to step out of. So if you haven't read this, it's probably unlikely that you haven't heard of it because it was very big. I believe it was done in 2011, but it was very, very big then. And they're actually going to be making a movie, I believe, of it. I don't think it's been done yet, but I know that the rights have been bought to it and they have somebody to do the screenplay. This is all according to what Wikipedia has told me. But I hope that the movie is done really well because this book was almost made to be a movie. I feel like if it's done right, it could be magnificent. And I'm really, really excited about it. I will probably go and reread the book before the movie comes out just to kind of put myself back in that world again. You can probably tell from my face that I really, really loved this book. So that again is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. I, it's, it's great. And it's not really long, and it's, it keeps you entertained from beginning to end with lots of twists and lots of amazing, her imagery, it was, this was the author's very first book she ever wrote, and her imagery is amazing. She, she's definitely found her calling as a writer. So that's all I have this week. It's a little bit shorter one, and next week will probably be a little bit shorter as well, and it will be later in the day because I will be coming back from the retreat. There will still be an episode. There will be a kind of a retreat recap where I'll talk about what I did and show some finished objects. But it will definitely be later since I will be getting home from the retreat later and want to see my family and spend some time with them. I'll probably record after my kids go to bed. So I hope you guys have a wonderful week and that you get to spend some time doing the things you love. Okay, bye guys.